Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be another review and wear test of an SPF powder. You guys loved the video that I did on this with the Physician's Formula SPF powder. I will link that here and put it in the description box below if you haven't seen that yet, but you guys really wanted me to continue to do this with more powders. So here we are for part two. Today we're going to be reviewing the Derma E Essentials Sun Protection Mineral Powder SPF 30. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this SPF powder, on the ingredients, the formulation, and then also see how it wears throughout the day as I continue to reapply. Stay tuned, we'll jump right into that. Before we do, if you could please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and also click on that notification bell, that would mean a lot to me and really help me out because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. And if you're interested in more content from me, my Instagram and TikTok handle are right here for you. All right, let's jump into it. So this SPF powder has 0.14 ounces in it compared to the Physician's Formula powder that I reviewed. This one has 0.26 ounces. So this one is a little bit less and retails for $21.95. So definitely not the most affordable option, but also not the most expensive one that I've seen out there. So before we get into the details with this, let's do the first application. And this is just their one standard shade, which is translucent. So we will see if this one is actually translucent. Okay, so you take off the cap and then, so it has this little plastic piece right here that you can slide up and down to either expose the brush or kind of protect the bristles. I actually really like that because I feel like this is a product that you would be likely to throw in a purse, throw in your back pocket, bring along with you for the day. So that just helps to make sure that the bristles don't get messed up. And then we just have the powder in there. Let me just tap this on the back of my hand first, see what this looks and feels like. what oh my gosh it's kind of hard to get out okay let me do it this way I'm trying to get this to not focus on my face that makes such a mess okay all right it's coming out more I feel like you just kind of gotta give it a second let's look and see if you can see the back of my hand so right there, it looks to be almost translucent. So hopefully that won't translate into a white cast on my face. Let's just jump into it and put it on my face. I feel like I can't really tell anything on the back of my hand. And then of course I have a full face of makeup on. The foundation that I'm using is the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. And then the sunscreens that I have on are the Dermatology Broad Spectrum SPF 45 as well as their Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46. And I do actually now have a 20% off discount code with Dermatology, which is amazing. So that will give you guys 20% off anything you buy on their site. So these are two of my all-time favorite sunscreens. They are absolutely gorgeous and you can get 20% off on these as well. So all that info will be linked below for you. All right, let's do it. Okay, so right off the bat, I do like how this looks on the skin. There is not an intense white cast. I do have a little bit of a white cast here on my chin and a little bit on my forehead, but nothing too major. And then it did help to just calm down those oils a little bit. If anything, I feel like it did emphasize the texture that I have going on. Like I feel like my skin looks a little bit more textured with that on than it did before. But other than that, I don't have any major complaints. I feel like it looks good on my skin. I'm a little bit unsure about the white cast though and the level of protection that I have. I don't know. I feel like it's interesting that I do have like that white cast on my chin but not the rest of my face because it's making me wonder, did this not come out enough on the rest of my face? Am I not adequately protected? Do you know what I mean? Hmm. So I don't know, this packaging, it's really hard to tell how much powder is coming out. It might be something, I wonder if I could take it off to like repay, oh, I think you can. Yes, okay. I think somewhere in here I have little powder compacts, like sifters that I just got from Amazon. I'm gonna see if I can find that and honestly unpackage this because it just makes me nervous that I don't know how much powder I'm applying. I wanna make sure that I'm actually getting adequate protection 
otherwise it defeats the purpose so let's see okay i just got these from amazon they came in a big pack and they were really inexpensive so i will link them below i'm going to twist this off and i'm going to dump it into here i really want to like give this powder a fair review especially compared to other powders and to do that i feel like i need to be certain that i'm applying enough so has a little sifter on top awesome i do want to continue to use the brush that it actually comes with for the rest of the video though so i will continue to do that just in the powder sifter and then last thing i want to point out that i'm really liking about this powder is that it did not remove or kind of erase my bronzer and blush and highlight that can definitely be an issue with spf powders especially if they have an intense white cast so so far so good all right let's talk through some of the details of this powder this powder is a mineral only SPF powder, so it has 17.29% titanium dioxide and 20% zinc oxide. So that's great if you have sensitive skin, you don't have to worry about the addition of chemical active ingredients. And then as far as the inactive ingredients here with this SPF powder, there were quite a few that did stand out to me. So the first is tocopherol, which is vitamin E. Vitamin E is a great antioxidant for the skin. This also has chamomile, which is another great antioxidant for the skin that also has skin soothing properties. This has green tea leaf extract, which is another antioxidant that has skin soothing properties, but is also shown to help to improve the appearance of sun damaged skin. So that's a great ingredient to have in an SPF powder. And then the third ingredient on this label is actually caprylic triglycerides which I really like to see so high up on the label because caprylic triglycerides are an emollient ingredient that help to moisturize our skin and help our skin resist moisture loss so that's great in an SPF powder especially because you're going to be reapplying multiple times throughout the day I really don't want to use a powder for that purpose if it's going to be drying on the skin so the more moisturizing ingredients in a powder the better in my opinion and then other than that there's nothing major I want to call out for ingredients aside from the addition of iron oxides iron oxides add the pigment to cosmetics and skincare and they also help to protect our skin from the longer waves of damaging uva rays and better protect our skin against melasma and hyperpigmentation than sunscreens that do not have iron oxide so love that that is in this powder and then other than that there are no irritating or sensitizing ingredients within the ingredient label no fragrance no essential oils amazing so basically Based off that ingredient label, I can say that that is a powder that I would recommend, or at least an ingredient label that I would recommend and stand behind. Of course, we need to see how this wears throughout the day and how it holds up with multiple reapplications. So we'll be back in a second for reapplication number one. We're back and ready for reapplication number one. I'm trying to think back to the moisturizer combination that I used today. I feel like I'm looking oilier than normal and normally that tinted sunscreen does not make me look oily. Definitely makes me look very dewy, but not to this level. I can't remember exactly what I used. So it's always good for a powder review though. Okay, what you guys? I'm really, really loving this and impressed by it. We can see here how dark that color is. It's definitely got like a warm yellowish undertone to it. So this is probably not going to be great if you have cool undertones to your skin, but it's definitely not translucent like it says on the label. However, I think that's a good thing in this situation because we don't have any white cast at all. Oh my goodness, and it really doesn't remove my bronzer and blush. Obviously it fades it a little bit, but really not bad at all and not even something I feel like I need to necessarily touch up after powdering. Sometimes that's another issue that I have with SPF powders is I feel like I then have to go ahead and reapply bronzer and blush and I don't wanna do that all day long. That's just a lot of makeup to be reapplying. So yes help to tone down the oils. Still I'm seeing, I don't know why, it's just right here on my chin. Tiny bit of a white cast, but the rest of my face, no white cast. I think this looks good. Yay. Okay, we'll be back for reapplication number two shortly. All right, so here is where we are at now. I will say, even though I feel like this initially mattifies my oils, it's not doing the best job at long-term control of oils like I feel like 
again, it's starting to come through a little bit more than I would maybe like it to, which is interesting. So, hmm. I picked up way too much. <coughs> I just inhaled that. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, the plastic part went down. So I just stamped. Okay, good to know, careful with that. Okay, I definitely used way too much powder on this part of my face right here, so I feel like I'm starting to see it sink into my lines a tiny bit. This looks the most matte that we have looked all day, so I'm gonna try to refresh this with a little bit of my Morphe Continuous Setting Mist, see if that brings some life back to my skin, because this is feeling too matte for my liking. I just don't personally love matte makeup on my skin. The worst part about that spray is it like drenches the hair around my face. Oh my gosh, that spot where that powder just like smacked in the center of my face. I'll try to just blend that out with a random brush I have sitting here. Okay, so definitely looks better, not as flat and matte as before that spray. Still though, the level at which this mattifies my oils initially. It's a little confusing. So still doing good with that reapplication. I will be back one final time for the last reapplication and I will give you guys my final thoughts then. Yeah, see my hair is drenched right here. Dang it. Okay. All right, we are ready for the final reapplication. I need to wrap this video up because I actually have plans. Going out on, no, I'm not going out on the town. I don't know why I was even gonna say that going over to my friend's house to have a picnic and get sushi. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. So I have to wrap this up here. Let's do one final reapplication. See how we're looking now. Yeah, I mean, we definitely are seeing the oil start to come through again. So, I think this looks really good. What are we at? That was our fourth reapplication. With four reapplications, this looks really good on the skin for that. It doesn't look crepey. It doesn't look too heavy. I'm impressed. It's something that definitely looks pretty mattifying at first, but as we have seen with my few check-ins, the natural oils definitely do start to come through. So I think that's really good news if you have dry skin to normal skin to even combination skin like me. I don't hate that when I start to get a little bit of the oils in my cheeks and my nose area because like I said, I just don't love to have super matte skin. If you have really oily skin, this may not provide you with enough mattifying power, unfortunately. The way that you could use this instead is by using a different brush and one that's even denser, like a foundation brush. Let me grab one. So something like this. We can see here that the bristles are much more densely packed than this. And that actually makes me a little bit nervous. I feel like just moving forward, I will be using a brush like this if I am going to use this powder because that's just going to ensure that I'm getting adequate coverage. You really don't wanna use a super fluffy brush when you're applying SPF powder because you're just not going to get enough coverage with that, again. So something big and fluffy like this is just not going to lay down that SPF evenly all over your face and the level slash amount that you need it to. I feel like this is a good in-between and then this is just best of the best. So this is not the best brush for SPF powder application, but do I think it's terrible or a bad option? Definitely not. I think it still works, but I'd recommend this instead. And other than that, I really don't have any complaints about this powder. I think it's a great option for those of you that are looking for something that you can put on top of makeup, that you can reapply throughout the day without it looking crepey and heavy and cakey. There's no white cast except for like that tiny bit here, like I said, but really there isn't a white cast to this powder, especially when you compare it to the last powder that I reviewed. 
I think it's a great option. Is it the most affordable option? Definitely not. Do I think it's worth it? I really do. Not only does the powder perform well, but the ingredients are great and there are no concerning ingredients within this formulation. So all in all, well, and aside from the fact that I did not love the way that this applies the powder in itself. So I would say packaging is like the one eh, but repackaging it in a little sifter like that works great. So final review is a yes from me. I would definitely recommend this powder. I know that there are a lot of you that want an option for makeup days and when you wear makeup like this, or even if you don't wear as much makeup, anytime you're wearing powder on your face makes putting a liquid SPF on top a nightmare. It just, I'm sure a lot of you have tried and even if you haven't tried the thought, it's just like, that's not gonna work for a lot of people. So of course on days when I'm not wearing makeup, I just stick to liquid SPF because I'm more confident in my coverage there and it just feels nicer on the skin to me than a powder. But for this scenario, the Derma E powder I think is an amazing option. So that is everything for this review. I hope that this was helpful for you guys. Definitely let me know in the comments below, have you tried out this powder? What do you think of it? Are you going to try it out after watching this video? Very curious. Let me know your thoughts. And if there's anything else you would like to see from me next, leave that in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.